Actually, today in the morning we had first session by Professor Vivek Nanuti from Nagpur. He discussed about the learning processes in terms of academics 5.2. So he gave overall idea how to deal with the technical courses and how to uh, implant the research during UG or PG studies. I think my screen is visible to you all. So good afternoon everyone and welcome back once again to this uh, second session of A4 for of one week online short term training program on domains of academia, research and teaching learning. It's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Professor Dr. K.V. Jayakumar from NIT Warangal, who is currently Emirates professor at NIT Warangal. In the he has joined the Department of Civil Engineering in 1993. So, uh, while sorting out different things from his, even for the pre bio data, it was too long. So, I, I suppose I will justify all the responsibilities, leads on all the information about him. So, he uh, served as advisor to the director to the special programs. Uh, professor Jay Kumar was nominated member of the Board of Governors and the Finance Committee of the Institute, that is NIT Warangal. Uh, he was also coordinator of Gyan course, that is Global Initiative for Academic Network, and he was also coordinator for SPARC, a scheme for promotion, academic and research collaboration. Apart from this, uh, Professor Jay Kumar was Dean, Planning and Development, as well as International Relations and Alumni Affairs. He was also head of the department, Civil Engineering, from July 2008, and in subsequently up to 2011. He was also Executive Director on Deputation of the Center of Center for Water Resources Development and Management, that is CWRDR, for the year 2010 LM. He was also having a full additional charge of director, Center for Science and Technology Entrepreneurship Development, that is C STEND, of the Government of Kerala and Kerala School of Mathematics. Sir is having association with University of Saint Germany, Griffith University, Brisbane, Australia. So he is also associated with the University of Britannia, Sri Lanka. Apart from this, he is also associated with KRDC, that is uh, in Suratkar, Center for Water Resources, Anna University, Chennai, IIT Khan. In terms of, uh, I have sorted out few honors and awards. Sir has received UNESCO Fellowship in, year, in the year 1992. He is also awarded with Distinguished Alumnus Award by NITK Suratkar during the Diamond Jubilee celebrations of the Institute. Sir is also recipient of Professor Ramaraju Award for Excellence in Water Resource Research during April 2019. Apart from this, he has uh, supervised eight PhD scholars and four are still uh, ongoing. He has also supervised one PDF scholar. Uh, he has uh, supervised around 115 MTech thesis and on his account, he has more than 100 publications, peer reviewed journals. Apart from this, I would like to tell you that Professor Jayakumar reads, writes, speaks, side English, Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and Hindi. And also, he has working knowledge in German, French, and Russian. So, with this brief discussion, I would like to invite Professor KV Jayakumar, sir, for his talk. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Ritesh. You must give me permission to share my PPT. Okay, good afternoon. I'm sorry for the small interruption because of some technical problem. I would have loved to give this talk directly rather than online. Because there's a lot of charm in giving an, a, a direct physical lecture. Because when I'm giving online, I talk to a screen. I don't really, it's not passionate. You don't get the reaction. The eye to eye contact is lost with them. The past year and a half, or a little more than that, we are used to this online uh, thing. So I want to share certain uh, concerns, opportunities in the research uh, based on my experience of first 30 years or so. So, uh, you know, all of us, uh, the, I start with this Venn diagram. There's something which you love doing and something which you are good at. 
and something in which you can pay for and what the world needs. For example, you love teaching and you're good in teaching. That's called passion. You are good in teaching, you're paid for teaching. That's called profession. You are paid for teaching, uh, but then the world needs somebody else. Or good teachers, it's called vocation. But what you, if you love what you do, and you also, the world also needs such people, it's called mission. The intersection of all these four is the mission of our uh, life in this. Now, as teachers and uh, researchers and you know people, you like to understand a few words which we normally use: knowledge, skills, understanding, and attitude. Knowledge is knowing how to do the job. That's what we learn in the engineering college institutes how to do the job. But do we have the skills? Skills are capable of doing the job. So in knowledge and skills together makes us complete. Then you must also have thorough understanding of when to do the job, and you must have initiate do the job when required. So all of us, when you're doing research, you should have the knowledge, you should have the skills, you should have the right understanding and the right attitude so that you can go up in life. So if we know what we are going doing, it would be called research. Will it do it? Will it? No. So if we, when you start research, you really don't know what the result we are going to get. So we know everything. There's not research at all. So there's a very famous quotation by Albert Einstein. It says, if you know what we are doing, it would be called research, would it? It will not. So research is a process to collect and analyze information and to increase our understanding of topic or issue and consists of posing a question or, or what type of research we do and then try to collect data to answer the question and then we present the answer to the question so research is a process of of this so we should be continuously questioning ourselves questioning everything so that we we know what we're doing so it's an academic activity and as such, research, if you use it in a technical sense, you see a very fantastic definition in the Clifford Woody research. Clifford Woody says research consists of defining and redefining problems. So you define a problem, when you get data, when you see the constraints, you refine your problem, you formulate a hypothesis or suggested solutions, collect, organize, and evaluate data, make deductions from the analysis and research conclusions, and at last, Carefully test the conclusion determine whether they fit the formatting, the formatting thesis. So it involves a lot of things. Now, objective of our research will be to gain familiarity with the phenomena or to achieve new insights into it. So when we do research, that's what we start. We want to get know something more about a small thing. We go deep into it. We want to get new ideas about it. So that is that is what we call uh, exploratory or formative research studies. Then we also like to portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual, situation, or a group that we would like to study, where what they do in psychology and management studies. So these are not descriptive research studies. And then we got uh, diagnostic research studies, which are to determine the frequency with which something occurs or with which it associates something else, how often a certain thing occurs, how often when something happens, the next thing also happens. So this is called diagnostic thesis. And then we have an hypothesis testing research studies to test hypothesis of the causal relationship between variables. So you know various variables, you like to know the relationship between those. So we have uh, various types of research. We, the research could be descriptive versus analytical. So descriptive research, analytical research. So descriptive research includes surveys, fact-finding inquiries, and different kinds. So many, uh, you know, in the management and economics and social sciences, these type of studies are very common. In social science digital research, we quite often these are used uh, and the main character of this method is that the researcher has no control over the variables. Like, you know, we have to do survey, we don't have control over from whom to collect data, how, what, what type of answer they'll give. So we can only report what has happened or what is happening because survey, that's the type of results you get. And uh, uh, the methods of research utilized in this research are survey methods of all kinds, including comparative and correlation methods. So we basically, we get the data and analyze it. In analytical research, on the other hand, the researcher has to use facts or information already available and analyze these to make a critical evaluation of the materials. That means we already have a lot of information, we already have facts, so we try to analyze them and then critical, we find we do a critical analysis of this. 
Then we have another type of research called applied research or fundamental research. Applied research is finding a solution for immediate problem facing a society or an industry or business organization. That means it's not a basic research. You are applying uh, the research to a, to a practical problem which a society faces, an industry faces, or a business organization faces. Whereas fundamental research is concerned with generalization within the formulation of theory. You try to develop a theory, you try to generalize certain, certain things, so that's called fundamental theory. So in basic sciences, most of the research are fundamental, and in engineering, most of the research are applied. So we apply the knowledge of basic sciences, basic things into the applied, thing, applied things. Then you have quantitative versus qualitative. Quantitative is we try to quantitatively, uh, you know, measurement uh, certain things. We give uh, we, everything expressed in terms of numbers. So how much, what, how much that, that type of thing. The quality research is concerned with qualitative phenomena. So it relates to quality of the of uh, or kind. So let us then we have conceptual versus empirical. So conceptual is related to abstract ideas. Empirical is based on uh, uh, database research, like we get a lot of data, we try to analyze, coming with conclusions which are capable of being verified. So empirical research can be verified by observation of experiment. We can also call it as experimental type of research. Empirical research also can be called experimental type of research. So when I when I am talking now, what is that I am trying to do? I am try, my object of this talk is be able to better formulate a research question, feel more comfortable with the research process, understand the major difference between qualitative and quality research processes for doing educational research. So how do you develop your question? Start with a clear purpose. What is that you're going to do? Your idea must be very clear. Know your literature, read, try to find out what, what is there in the literature. Basically, what happens is many times in the PhD or other research, the literature review is very, very important. It continues till the end of the research. It is not beginning of research, but it is throughout the research because as you go further, and if some new literature comes, a new idea comes, you should be able to absorb it. In fact, I find many people doing literature review after their theory, after their thesis, because they have to write a thesis, a chapter. And some of those people start uh, start uh, literature and stop doing literature review later. So you must, uh, literature review is continuously done till you submit your uh, research, research. Then be excited approach, like, you know, you keep doing and doing and doing and try to specify the who, what, where, and when of your purpose. Ask yourself, what would be the answer to the question? Will this answer add to the literature? Like, you know, what the, when you get a result, will it add to add more knowledge to the literature already existing? So basically, every research should have a small amount of knowledge to the research already existing. Then, you don't fix up a methodology and try to you know do your research. It should not be methodology based research, but the methodology should develop for the research. So don't let methodology drive the question. So that is very important. You don't have a fixed methodology that this is what I'm going to follow, and then pose your research problem to suit your methodology. No, your methodology should be your question is foremost. Once the question is identified, you develop a methodology. The methodology could be new or old, it would be a combination of new or old. In fact. Any research has, has three categories, I always say. One is the problem is uh, old problem. People have been trying to do, uh, you know, find better solution in an old problem and then try to develop methods. So that is one thing. De develop a method for an old problem. Second one is problem could be new. Use existing methods to solve a new problem. The problem is new, so do a literature review, find various methods and then try to uh, de develop uh, find a solution for a uh, for a new problem. Third one is the problem could be new or new or old. So you try to develop a method, modify a method to suit your problem. So all ty three types of research is, is goes on in this thing. So the research process includes the identification of problem or question. So what is exactly you like to do? Do a literature review. Go th go through the literature. Specify questions and hypotheses. What is that you're going to do? Determination of design and design or determination of method, what they are going to do. Data collection, how we are going to collect data, what is the sample size, what how we are going to do, what type of experiments they are going to do. Then you have to do, do the data analysis and present the data and then interpret your findings. Now there are certain non-research reasons for undertaking literature review. We do literature review sometimes 
it could it need not be for research at all. The literature review could be for an, for an assignment for an academic course. We, your teacher gives a, uh, you are doing a course and then you, you are asked to find something to update current personal knowledge and practice on topic. You would like to update yourself. What is happening and what is the update of the practice? To evaluate current practices, to develop and update guidelines for practice, to develop work related policies. So these are all the non research reason for the literature review. Then, as I said, quantitative and qualitative research. Quantitative research, you give numbers, numbers, and numbers, all in terms of numbers. Qualitative research, you give words, words, and words, descriptive. So quantitative is numbers, qualitative is descriptive. So what are the assumptions in the quantitative is qualitative? In quantitative, based upon the idea of logistical positivism, that is, there is a singular reality with stable social facts that are separate from the feelings and beliefs of individuals. The other one is based on the motion of constructivism, which assumes multiple realities that are socially constructed through individual and collective perception or views of same situation. I'll explain this a little more. So when you do quantitative research, you seek to establish a relationship and explain the cause of change in the measured variables. You are measuring a lot of variables. You try to establish a relationship between various variables. That is, the goal of science is to explain and predict. So you're trying to explain, you're trying to predict what is going to happen. That is, qualitative research is you have to understand the social phenomena from the participants' perspective. This requires some degree, the researcher's participation. When you do quality research, the researcher should also get involved in the, uh, uh, in the perspective of the participants. Then uh, in the quantitative method, use scientific methods, also known as priori or pre-established design. In scientific method, you take a pre-established or a priori design, whereas in the quality process, use of emergent design, utilizing constant comparison and revision. Then in the quantitative study, your experimental college designs are used to reduce error, bias, and influence of external variables. So control of bias is through design, whereas in the quality research, you, uh, we try to understand multiple perspective situation by the persons you're studying. Subjectivity in data analysis and interpretation is acknowledged. Then when you do quantitative research, you're detached from the study in order to avoid bias because you should not bias, whereas in the quality research, you have to get immersed so that you understand what is the phenomena you are studying. Then in quantitative research, you do context-free generalization. Whatever generalization you are context-free, like in any place you can use it. Whereas in quality research, these generalizations that you get are contextually bound. That means whatever you are based on the survey, based on the constraint, your generalization is based on that. Then in quantitative research, all results are obtained by measurement and statistics, whereas in quality research, everything is provided by the detailed description of the phenomena. Then your quantity research results replicate by others, so others can replicate, they can re reproduce your results, whereas quality research, it is extension of understanding by others, like whatever you do, others must understand. So quantity research, uh, what is the classic example? That's a type of question. Here, anyone has an example? So when you have quality research, you ask anyone as an example, whereas in quality research, I ask what is the design example? That's how you do it. So, and then when you give results, you give statistical uh, probability, whereas here you give summary interpretation. How you interpret it? Same results could be interpreted by different people in different ways, so that is possible. So quantitative studies could be descriptive, truly experimental, quasi-experimental, correlational, and predictive. That's a type of quantitative study that you do. And research using primary data, you get data yourself, cross-sectional data, case control data, cohort data, and randomized control trial. And uh, cross-sectional study involves data gathered at one point in time. That means your data is collected at a particular point in time, is often used for surveys, cannot make influence about causality, like you cannot make any inference about that. So you find uh, what is the difference between research methods and research methodology. Research methods are ways and means of conducting research that involve conduct experiment, test, surveys, and the like. Aims at finding solution to research problem. But the research methodology is science of systematically solving a research problem. So method is different. Method is your experiment, test, surveys, and the like. Whereas here, how to develop 
systematically the solving a research problem. The learning of various techniques we can use in the conduct of research. So let's say type of research, as I said earlier, on the base objectives, fundamental applied and action research, on the base of na nature of data, it could be qualitative or quantitative, on the base of nature of findings, this could be explanatory research, exploratory research, descriptive research, on the base of experimental manipulation, it could be experimental non-experimental research, on the base of approach involved, longitudinal research and cross-sectional research. So good quality research provides evidence that is robust, like when you get results, it must be robust, must be ethically correct, stands up to scrutiny, and can be used to inform policy making. It should adhere to principles of professionalism, transparency, accountability, audibility. So that is where, you know, lots of tests come here. You have to be very ethically correct. You have to be transparent. You must be accountable for whatever you give, and your results can be auditable. Now, that's where you have many of the tests that you have right now. So a good quality research is based on the work of others. So you do an extremely good research uh, literature review to find out what has been done in the past, whether I can use somebody else's work on my work, uh, whether I can modify the earlier work to, to do my work, whether I can develop a new work based on the past work. So it's based on the work of others. And it, your research must be replicated, like somebody else should be, to, to be able to you know, replicate your, your work and it's not doable. You cannot do a research which is not doable by others. And it is generalizing to other settings, like you should say, that if you got other settings, your results must be valid. Then it should be based on some logical rationale and tied to theory, like anything that you do, you must be theoretically supported. And it generates new questions or a cyclical nature, like you know, generate new questions or if the answer, the question, the answer could be lead to another question and it is incremental. Every time you do research, you are adding incremental knowledge. So a good research should fulfill the following four conditions, objectivity, reliability, validity, and generalizability of the findings. Like your, your research should have certain object, your objectivity, it must be reliable, it must be valid, valid, you must be able to validate, and you must be able to generalize. Now, this is some one information I gave to my students recently. PhD should never forget the fact that they are expert researchers. When you do research, you will be, you will be an expert researcher. You are highly trained in identifying problems and finding solutions to those problems. Think of all the uncomfortable hours, days, weeks, months, and years. Even decades are spent trying to find answers to the world's toughest unknown questions. This makes you unique. Know your value, stay positive, and excited about the future. So this is what I tell my students, that you are expert researchers. You are trying, you are spending so much of time, the hours, days, weeks, and months in trying to find answers to the world's toughest unknown question. Like every research starts with the unknown question. You're trying to find the answer. So at the beginning of the research, uh, you, you, you do a lot of things. When you finish the research, you start thinking, why did I spend so much time on this? I could have done in six months or one year. That's because at the end of the research, you know all the answers, all the problems. So you're very clear. If you repeat the same research again, you will do it in one fourth the time. So that is what, what we do. So this is what I always tell my uh, PhD students that you should never forget that you're expert researcher. That's what we train them. Now, how do we write a research proposal? So a research proposal is sets out a broad topic you would like to do research. Like, you know, you would try to set out a broad topic you would like to do research, the substance, and what the research would set out to achieve. That's the aims and objective. And how you would go about researching it, that's the methodology. And how you undertake it within the time available, so outline plan, what the results might be in relation to knowledge and understanding the subject and potential outcomes. Like so, your results must be must be in relation to knowledge and understanding the subject. So, what is the outcome that you get? So, the so when you try to apply for funding, the investigator should convince the funding agency that the problem is significant worth the study. So many times we simply write a research proposal and then it is not, doesn't get approved. So you, the problem is significant, it's very important, and it is worth spending money and time on, on that. Then technical approach is novel, that the approach that you're using is new, it is something which others have not tried, and it's likely to eat results. So you'll have to convince the funding agency that your research will yield results. The investigator and his or research team are the right group of individuals to carry out and accomplish the work described in the research proposal. That means when you prepare a proposal, these are the things which you look because I sit in various committees to approve proposals. 
and those are the times when you know we try to find out is this problem okay Can, is it worth studying or we reject it right there and then what is the method so these are what we try to do so the purpose of the research is to complete to when you propose a proposal is to convince others that you have a worthwhile research project that you are the competence and the work plan to accomplish, to accomplish to sell your ideas to the funding agency like you have a lot of ideas and today funding is not a problem there are so many funding agencies uh, getting is not a problem in fact i sit in various committees in fact i would like to share something here many of the funding agencies have a weakness for iits and nits they think these people are very good but people work in certain private institutions also good so we so we try to see that if the pr proposal is good we don't worry about the institute if the good proposal comes from a private institute also it gets approved so people from private universities uh, need not worry that a good proposal will be rejected because uh, the, the the committee is very open to receive ideas from a private college which is worthwhile because i was involved in certain certain committee like this so typically what are the elements found in a research proposal the title abstract the content sheet introduction review the literature in the review literature should give national status and international status what is the status in our country what is happening across the world what happens across the world may not be suitable to our country in fact i work in a subject called water resources many times what happens in highly developed countries is not applicable to us because in india for example if i want to talk about water resource it rains only 60 days in a year whereas in europe in uk in france it rains 300 days in a year if i take their model it will not work here if I, my model will not work there so we have to develop our own method but you should have when you do the literature review what is the status in the country what is status international how the you can your research is going to update uh, the knowledge available then what method you're going to use and what are the ethical and legal considerations of your your research so here what is the problem why is it a problem so for whom it is a problem so first thing is what's the problem so first thing is you will understand what causes this problem who has authority to solve the problem who has a responsibility to solve the problem for whom it's a problem who wins who loses so these are all the questions that we ask and then we also find out is the problem economic base or is it historical and is it there from from ages what potential biases apply to the problem it could be cultural bias it could be religious bias it could be social bias these are useful when you do social science research then economic uh, condition social condition what are consequences consequences to economic consequences to social consequences to global problem consequences to other areas and then you find are there similar problems analogous problems local problems historical problems or global problems and then what is evidence of this problem what are the evidence now how do you know it's a problem are there strong evidence or are there weak evidence and are there flaws are there contradictions what assumptions are the problem based on is it assumption false assumptions or true assumption what are the solution to this problem so you find lots and lots of these things happening and you will have to uh, be very clear on why these things are happening Let me just connect my vacuum board so that I can do some marking on this. Just have a minute. So the question is here: For whom it's a problem? what biases apply to the problem what are the consequences of this problem are there similar problems locally historically or globally what are the evidence how this problem how did you understand this problem is there strong evidence weak evidence what are the assumptions and what are solution problems so you have to understand uh, lots of these things uh, when you do research that means you spend hours and hours in trying to go deep into the problem take a problem look at it from all sides from the top from the bottom from the left from the right try to understand from the problem from all perspective and then you 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 get your solution so what is the format of a research proposal based on that you have to prepare a formal research proposal first thing is 
it will be very neat. Like, you know, the language must be good. It, the, look, the look must be very good. So that immediately, you know, before they, 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 they call you, the first thing is they do, they read a proposal. So proposal must be neat. It must evaluate the studies that you already read. That means your literature review must be clearly given. And you, you have to plan how you're going to research it. Time frame, your money frame, all sorts of things you have to take care. So format is a proposal. You have to have an introduction. Then uh, review the literature, literature. What method are you going to use? How do you analyze, going to analyze the data? How do you, what are the result data? What are the implications of the results? What are the limitations? That's very important to give the limitations. And if something is there, append this is this how you give a proposal. Like, you know, proposal must be brief, very brief. If some additional information required, you can put at the as an appendix. So introduction is, is your problem statement must be very, very clear. You must very clearly give your problem statement and why you do the research. So your research object was very clear. What hypothesis that you're going to take, take and what are the terms that you're going to use. So you must define the terms, whatever terms, uh, right there in the beginning. And then a summary. So your introduction is that. The literature review is important the question asked. What is the, this I told you, current state of the report, the national rational. And what is the relation between the literature and the problem statement? Like, you know, if your literature is there, in fact, sometimes I, when I read research, research papers, research uh, thesis, I find so much of literature, 300, 200, I don't think the student has read all of them. He must have read maybe 30, 40 literature who gone into depth, but others are he is just filling up pages. So I, I in fact sometimes I don't mind 30, 40 extremely good literature rather than 300 papers at the end, uh, where you, you, you don't even read, read that. So you, you, your literature must be related to your problem statement. It must be corresponding to problem statement, not just people write, he has done this, he has done. so what? What did you get from that? He has done it, so what? So somebody has done it, he says, so and so, so and so has done this work. As you so what is that you got from that? Somebody has used a particular method. What did you get from that? Is the method applicable to your method? Can his method be modified to suit your problem? So that's what you have. So and then at the end of the literature, you have to summarize the literature review to say, based on literature, these are the gaps identified. And this is what I'm going to do. These are methods I'm going to use. These are the combination methods I'm going to use. So to summarize the literature review. And then in the method, who are going to participate in your research? How are you going to design the research, your design methodology? Then data collection plans, you're going to collect data. How are you going to collect the data? Uh, are you going to collect the data uh, yourself? Or are you going to hire somebody? Are you going to collect uh, conduct experiments? How much time is the experiment going to do? So what are the various operational definitions of the data collection? And reliability and value to the instrument, what instrument are you going to use? Is the instrument reliable? Is the instrument uh, uh, detail valid? valid? And results of pilot studies before you send a proposal, do a small pilot study and say you already done something and then you're sending a proposal. So the people funding it will convince that you already done some work and you're trying to apply for a project. And then how do you, what is the proposed analysis of the data? Because you really collect the data, you're going to analyze. Are you going to analyze? You're going to write your own software or are you going to use existing packages and the many packages available you're going to use and what are the results that you're going to, going to expect? Then you have the implications and limitations. And the appendix is you're going to write copy of the instruments that will be used. What are the instruments that are going to use? The results of the pilot studies, participant approval form, and timeline. These are all put in the appendix. And this is the timeline. If you go to pause for three, three years, like you know, what are going to do for six months, the next six months, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, the timeline must be given in the appendices. Then uh, you would evaluate the studies you already read. You already read a lot of literature and you critically evaluate the literature you read and then say, this is what you are going to do. So evaluating the research is very, very important. So how do you, how, what are the various criteria for judging a research study? The review of previous research, which you have done, the problem and the purpose, whether it is valid, it is necessary, hypothesis, the method, the sample, results and discussion references, and general com comments about the report. So these are all things which you'll have to take care. Then you have to, uh, once you get the thing, how are you going to plan the actual research? What activities must be completed at regular intervals? How much time it will take to complete each step? So you have to plan these things in advance. And you always give a margin in case something goes wrong. You always give a margin. So how much time it will take to complete each step? 
then how do you select a dependent variable? So try to use proven measures. Then if you go little literature, you'll say many four methods are available. Ensure that that particular method is valid. Ensure that the measure that the method is applicable that is reliable. Consider so suppose some method is given. So like use of some software, you don't know the software. So find out what train you might need in, you to, in, in order to use the measure, like in order to learn the software in order to this. In fact, today, most software available in engineering can be learned within a week. Because everything is uh, you know interactive. It, it, it takes one, one week to learn and a little more time to master because you have to work on that to become master of that. Then when the uh, how to measure me, then you should have a test, test data, a test input, test output to test the, the software that you have. So a known result, a known so data, a known result, so that you're, the, you're convinced that the software or the measure that you use is correct. Then if some norms are required, if you normally certainly be sure they are available, then uh, when you get the most recent version of the test, be sure the test is appropriate for the age group intent to sample. Like, you know, this is for social science also. Read any reviews of tests that are available. Now, when you review a test, basically a statistical test, etc., etc., uh, you have to use uh, uh, to you have to review and evaluate test on these criteria. What are criteria? Basic information, general test information, design and appearance, reliability, validity, norms, and evaluation. Now, how do you select a sample? Others may be seeking participants. Like, you know, there may be others who would try to like, let's say, example. Think about whether the group membership was a problem. If somebody is a member of the group, some particular thing is, is your problem, will it uh, will it be, uh, you know, biased? Know exactly how you intend to approach your participants. Clear the identity for the population from which you intend to sample. The size of the sample depends on the type of research you're doing. Consider both validity and reliability. How much money you can spend, number of variables, and the, and the variable size. Now, for collecting data, you have to form, prepare certain data collection forms. Now, if you are doing engineering thing, it will be a, in the form of experiment. If you are doing a traffic study, it will be a type of data. If you are trying to understand the, the behavioral study, it will be a form. So you have to, a data collection form must be prepared. And you would find out for analyzing data, what are the descriptive statistics you are going to use? Uh, what are the things that you are going to use? And identify what other demographic information you will need. Collect and analyze the pilot data. Have you done it? So when you find the Indian Council of Social Sciences, sir, since I understand that the management graduates also in this, so there are projects, if you're management of humanities, uh, these are the private projects which ICCR supports. Easy to get fund from ICCR. Sociology and social anthropology related activities, political science, public administration, economics, international studies, social geography and population studies, Commerce and management, social psychology, education, social linguistics, law, international law, other allied social disciplines. So all I have given a list here, library science, social work, media studies, uh, area studies, Sanskrit society, etc., to promote interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. Now there is a scheme called IMPRESS. IMPRESS Initiative Minister of Education aims to encourage social science research in policy relevant areas so to provide vital inputs in policy formulation implemented by HCCR. Now this is basically to encourage policy research in social sciences to have visible impact on the, on the politics, on the economy, on the society, on the culture, media, governance, health, environment, technology, law, etc. So means many things are, are in, 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 involved here. So everybody, and many people in science, uh, uh, technology, environment, Entrepreneurship, everybody can apply the project under Impress. So there's some certain topics: state and democracy, urban transformation, media culture, society, employment skills and rural transformation, governance, innovation, public policy, growth, macro trade, economic policy, agriculture, rural development, health and environment, science and education, social media and technology, politics, law and economics. So all government funded institutions, including universities. Central state, private institution with UGC 12 status, ISA research projects are able to apply. That means under these projects, all these institutions that can apply for these projects. So application will be invited to advertisements on impress and ICCR websites. Then there is another thing under DST. 
uh, where assistance for development of states science and technology council so these uh, you have applied through the concerned state uh, science and technology council so here the type of projects under state science and technology councils are science and technology studies called st a surveys location specific research and technology development called lsr science and technology demonstration project then replication of successful models joint science and technology projects and specific theme jointly with industries information exchange experience sharing awareness and training specific course like you know you can have a one day course a three day pro program on awareness of a particular topic so uh, these are all the uh, uh, seven types of research activities which the science and technology which the department of dst can support and uh, when you apply a project there are many key words which are used for rejection of a thesis because you, you should know how a thesis gets approved rejected so these are some of the comments we normally use scientifically not well formulated like when some publisher is a very serious proposal is not well formulated scientifically like it is not on a strong basis it may be rejected then science aspects very marginal very little science is involved so it will not be approved conceptually weak proposal like proposal is weak in conceptual level itself problem not well defined scientifically weak project ill defined objective the objective is too generic methodology articulation not clear no novelty nothing new is there that the investigative expertise not commensurate with the submitted proposal when you submit a proposal you also ask the background on the investigator if the investigator is not having experience in that particular area uh, then that project may not be approved so that means you apply for a project which you have at least a little bit expertise because this comment is not not very good that your expertise not commensurate with the uh, submitted proposal then too exploratory to realize proof of concept like when you do a, a proposal you have a proof of concept study like you know your concept that you are analyzing there must be a proof that you have you have done this work so it should, the project should not be too exploratory uh, because the proof of concept must be realized the demand of work not evident you say 3 or 3 years in fact project may not require 3 years at all so whether so much work is required so much time is required so much money is required so demand for work not evident the commitment of project team lacking you put some three four people the project uh, investigator co investigator etc and you find that it's not a good team so that that's also a, a, a common thing that that you understand then your uh, so superiority or existing alternative is not feasible like you know you claim your methodology is, is superior but then you find your methodology is not feasible so superiority over existing alternative is not feasible you must give alternate solution alternate method and it's not feasible then if you have a industry partner you should you should clearly make what is that industry going to do in fact there is some uh, project called industrial water in which i was involved uh, you have to involve the industries to provide maybe the facilities maybe their 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 equipment their instruments or maybe their expertise do the work if the if you just put a industry's name and industry's role is not well defined then again Uh, the project cannot be approved so the role of the industry responsibility was very clear then your concept the technical viability of the concept not convincing so each one of, and then maybe all of the above so you have to prepare a proposal it takes time take a couple of months time to prepare a proposal please do not wait till a, a proposal advertisement comes for prepare proposal keep ready when advertisement comes you know you can uh, start and then you can fine tune it and then and this submitted now this is a typical report that you have uh, so you find uh, first when you finalize the report this this all do the abstract the problem statement indication of methodology main findings principal conclusion that's what should be the abstract the interaction you have to establish a, 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 a area of research establish a niche like you know you want to claim that your research is better than other research you have to estimate indicate a gap in the raise a question continuing a tradition so they're all coming there then occupy the niche so your outline proposals are now announcing present research and also principal findings so if i find here i written here this here in the past 
much research focused on that's what you should write what in the past what is uh, research focused on that here established gap it remains unclear why these things are not happening so that's a type of statement that you can use it's not clear why you're doing this then purpose of the study is to so you write here that why your study is there so you have to find out why what happened in the past what is not done and why you are going to do it and then you collect that you write here data your study was collected by so what is the method of collecting data and then the final study clearly show that this is your discussion and one explanation for etc etc that's how you write the study is limited by so limitations so you, put, you have to make your writing very clear in fact uh, after you do the work spend an adequate time in preparing a report because doing a good job and not reporting ba uh, reporting badly is very bad sometimes there are people who don't do very good research but they report so beautifully it is approved so writing is also a very very important thing that you have to consider uh, in in your research and then uh, what are the uh, commonly statistical tests that you use type of data there will be continuous data continuous data or there could be discrete or categorical data so con uh, uh, your continuous data uh, you have uh, lots of questions that I put here. Do you have a truly independent, independent variable difference between uh, what? So you write the regression analysis, correlation analysis for continuous data, parametric analysis, non-parametric analysis here. Then you find uh, test for equal variances, various tests are there. How many groups are there? More than two groups. Then you find the parametric assumption. Do the various tests like ANOVA, significance test. So you find lots and lots of uh, uh, statistical things can be used and there are methods available in the literature. So you find that it's a cycle that you have here. You formulate the research problem, you do an extensive literature review, develop the hypothesis, prepare the research design, determine the sample design, collect the data, execute the project, analyze the data, hypothesis, test the hypothesis, generalize interpretation, prepare the report and so on. So this is a simple cycle of how you prepare the report. Now, a, a general guideline on how to prepare a right report, an abstract will be about 250 words. It's a purpose, it's a mini version of the paper, 200, 250 words. And then a uh, verb that you use English, simple past refers, uh, single past tense refers to work done in the past. The elements will be what should it should contain is principal object is methods used, principal result, main conclusion. Then you write introduction, 1000, 2000 words. Literature, 1000, 2000 words. It provides the rationale for the study. So the language use is present tense. Refers to established knowledge in the literature. So an abstract in past, simple past tense. And your introduction should be the present tense. And in the introduction, you should have nature and scope of the problem. Review of relevant literature. Hypothesis, approach that you're going to do. You have to justify why you're using this approach. The main results and the main conclusion. Then the next uh, will be methods and materials, about 500,000 words. Describe what was done in your study, your experiment, model or field study. Here you use a simple past tense, refers to work done. And then here, what is, what is they're going to use is a description of the materials, description of procedure, the logical order, sufficient details so that procedure can be reproduced. So, you will, so these are some of the word limit that we, that we use in preparing proposals. Then results, 500 to 1500 words. In results, you have to present the data, the facts, what you found, what you calculated, what you discovered, what you observed. So here again, you use simple past tense, refer to what was found or observed. So what you should contain is your results, your observation with the experiment field work, your observation about the results, like all your observation. Compare your results, contrast your results in the past, compare results between experiment, the results are calculated using data such as rates of error, etc. All sorts of things. Then discussion is very, very important on the results. 1,000 to 1,500 words as where, where you show the relationship between the facts. Put results that contrast the previous result, like how your results are better than the previous result. So the language use is present. Emphasis, emphasis on established knowledge and present result. So here uh, you write, here you use the trends, relationships, uh, generalization shows by, shown by result, any exception, outlined data, etc. 
how your results agree disagree with the previous studies and why so this is where you write the discussion like you know you got some results and previous results are different why your results are different from the previous results so that's what you should see then you have to give a conclusion uh, which gives your uh, summarize your principal findings then the language used is present uh, emphasize on what should be now accepted as established knowledge like you know you have to emphasize that your uh, knowledge your results are coming as an established knowledge like what are you given is going to establish knowledge so conclusion should relate back to the introduction so in conclusion you should write the one or two sentences of introduction the hypothesis use summary evidence supporting each conclusion an implication the significance of the result or any practical application like how it can be done so all these are coming in the report so title of the project is very important the title of the project 8 to 15 words is most not more than that draws readers interest when you write a title it should attract the interest of the readers who are going to read so that's very very important okay so I like to spend about five minutes on water, which I'm working. So that is uh, where I've worked for 35, 30, 35 years. This has some general information, uh, which is useful to everybody. In fact, uh, I always remember this statement by John F. Kennedy, former president of the United States in 1962, who says one who solves the problem of water should be awarded with two Nobel Prizes. One for science, other one for peace. Because now you see countries fighting for rivers, the states fighting for rivers in our country. So you find that one who solved the problem of water should be about two Nobel Prizes, one for science, other for peace. I'll just spend three, four slides on the water issues in the world. Now, this was a map prepared in the year 1999, just before we entered the millennium, to show how much water is available in the world. Because now any industry, any development is water sensitive. If you want to do anything, you need water. So any any design, it could be IT related, it could be chemical related, it could be Mechanical everywhere you require water. So everywhere is water. So an analyst done what is the water availability in the world in 1999, uh, starting from 1950 and then projected to 2025. This map was prepared in 1999 and it showed if the darker color shows, there is no water. Water is very, very low. Lighter shade says there is no water problem at all. So you find that this map was prepared in the year 1999 and shows in 95 India was uh, blue color, that means water is available. But in 2025, the population increase, our industries output is increased, our agriculture increase, we need more water, and you find the whole India is dark in color. India, Afghanistan, I mean, Pakistan, Afghanistan, whole of Gulf, whole of North Africa is in black color, which shows that water is not available in the future in 2025. So 1990 was prepared, it was not accepted by the world across. And this map was revised with this map. So this map shows that the western part of our country, starting from you know, Kerala to Karnataka to Goa, Maharashtra, Gujarat, etc., and extension towards Gulf and the northern part of Africa, has red color, red color with physical water scarcity. Physically, water is not available. And the, blue, and the eastern part of our country shows blue color. It shows the whole of Russia, uh, whole of uh, America. Also shows blue color. Blue, blue color says there is need for water development. That means water is available, but you need to develop. So this was prepared in the year two, two, 2005, uh, which was again not accepted by the world because it says it's so general. I mean, this, this shows the whole world blue color. That everywhere there is a need for development of water. And yellow color says the economic water scarcity. Yellow color means what is available, but no money to develop. So you find the whole of Africa is yellow. Whole of Australia is yellow. Whole of South America is yellow. So they need to spend money to develop water. So that is what that is what is shown. Then this map was revised in the year 2005. Now this is the map which is which is used till about 2015. Now this shows that I'll just talk about India. India is in two color. The central portion is, is in red color. The coastal region is in yellow color. The red color shows the physical water scarcity. That means physically water is not available to meet the demand of the domestic, of the industry, of the agriculture. The coastal region starting from Bangladesh to Orissa to Tamil Nadu to coastal Karnataka, Goa, etc. is economic water scarcity. Water is available, no money to develop. And same in the case of Australia. So this again was not accepted. 
uh, till 2005 it was, it was it, 2013 is going on and 2013 this map was prepared this is a map which is being used today across the world for development now this map shows uh, here you find uh, there is a uh, is a uh, you know there is a line here which shows uh, different colors has some different numbers the numbers are liters per capita per year how much what is available per person per year in different places now look at india india is in yellow color this means india is in water stress and vulnerable condition like this condition see here this is what is available in india that means india is in a water stress water vulnerable condition when you go to this color blue color blue color shows that there is no problem at all so whole of australia whole of south america whole of north america part of africa whole of australia whole of russia and japan etc they are not going to have any problems so this has been established there 2013 and today whatever research is going on across the world is based on this map and then as all of us are teachers researchers we come across lots of people and when you come across a lot of people you will have problem there are people who like you and people who you like enjoy them you like somebody somebody likes you enjoy the company but you like somebody they don't like you accept them there are people who who, who like you but you don't like them you they like you but you don't like them you have to respect them but the people who you don't like people who don't like you you can avoid them so this is what we do in uh, in your in your day-to-day -day life if you want to live comfortably you find this is a very very good uh venn diagram i found that you accept people whom you like but people who don't like you you enjoy people whom you like people who like you also and you respect people who who you who like you but you don't like them but then people who don't like you and you don't like them you just avoid so you are very comfortable that's how the present world is there and all of us when you do research you must have a high level of integrity no plagiarism it's very very important you must be highly motivated to research motivate yourself motivate others you must be highly extremely honest you must be innovative you must try to get new ideas you must have lateral thinking you must be sincere you must be hard working you must provide a leadership you must be in, uh, you must have inspiration so all these eight characters are very important for uh, most of the research uh, especially you know people like us who are in teaching uh, we have high this gives us very good satisfaction in life that you are you are doing this and uh, certain uh, small things to motivate you if you can go 24 hours without complaining this, this is now about one o'clock now till tomorrow one o'clock don't complain about anything no, nothing, no complain at all. You find the whole world will start changing. Go 24 hours without complaining, not even once, you find the whole, how the life changes. Like, you know, you never complain about anything, you go on changing. And then go out there, be amazing. You go and do research and be amazing. So that's a very positive way of looking at things. You go out there and be amazing. And you must have these, these uh, characters, you must be calm. Is approachable, it must be imaginative, it must be logical, knowledgeable, passionate, enthusiastic, leader, efficient, mentor, patient, learner, have all rolled into one for a, being a good teacher, for good, being a good, good uh, researcher. Many of the characters are very, very important. And uh, once you develop at least for some of this, you can really shine in your life because, you know, only teaching and research, uh, you feel very satisfaction. You're highly satisfied with it. Good research. Okay, I'll stop here. If you've got any queries, uh, you can uh, uh, ask me now or I have given my email ID. You, you are free to even contact me over email. I'll assure you of a reply within 24 hours. I reply to all my mails in the morning. Uh, sometimes you get reply immediately also. I, I'll give my reply. And then I have my slide. This is one of my favorite slides. Uh, this is a lake in Calicut. When I was working in Calicut as a director, this lake was, you know, dumped with all the, all the waste in the city. So we applied for a project with the government of India that this lake will clean up without using chemicals, without using power, by using natural process. So I use certain plants which are seen here. These plants that you see here, this plant, these are belong to Typha group of family, type of particular Typha latifolia group. These plants enjoy wastewater. If you plant five plants per square meter, the water quality improved by 95 percent 
So we took up this lake. I got some money from the government of India. I it took about some time to understand how many plants, what type of plants. So I identified about 25 types of plants which are locally available. And then we cleaned up this water and we found that at the end of three years, the water was so good. These are my hands. I'm taking water out. And one of my scientists told me, sir, please hold it. Let me take a photograph. In fact, I was ready to drink the water. And uh, I, I, I got a lot of recognition for this uh, from the wetland, uh, wetland research South Asia. And this, la this particular lake has been declared as one of the best urban lakes in India. It's in Calicut. Now we've got such lakes uh, all over. We are trying to clean up. And these are, this is one of my favorite slides where I got a lot of recognition. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, wonderful talk. Dear participants, if you have any questions, uh, you may write in the chat box or you may raise your hand. So, uh, give you rights to discuss with sir. Just to summarize what sir discussed, sir discussed about the research methods, difference between the research method and methodologies, which we are always having confusion. What exactly the research methods are and research methodology. Now, but that uh, sir discussed about outline of research proposal, do's, don'ts, how to grab the opportunity in terms of fundings, and what must be included in your research, or what which kind of problem statement you must have. It, he started with the title as well, which is very precise. Actually, nobody tells this. To be frank, sir, nobody tells this that your title should be eight to twelve or eight to fifteen words. So that is what we are actually uh, are get, gaining from this STTP. The real experience. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, really, I loved that Venn diagram. Yeah. So we need to we need to think about we need to accept everything what is coming to our way. Just try to accept it. Try to make it in the positive way. So the uh, you will get whatever the output you want. That is what the takeaway point from the uh, session by Professor Jay Kumar. Singh. So anything from the participants? Something you can put in the chat box also, I can read it. Yes. Sir, I would like to ask one question to you. Yes, please. Sir, many times it happens, like you also mentioned that whenever we are submitting any research proposal, yeah. uh, most of the times they would ask whether you have gone through this, uh, you have performed any kind of experiments or do you have data or you have analyzed it. But what happens, most of the budding researchers, they are just emerging, finishing their PhD. And most of the times we are trying to go beyond the limit or beyond the boundaries. Uh, the topic, let's say PhD topic is something different, but yes, we are interested in something else. And what happens actually when we used to join the after PhD, uh, we are we are looking for new opportunities to go for the proposal, grabbing the funding. So what is your suggestion in that case? Because uh, just completing after the PhD, uh, I think uh, it may take two to three years to do some kind of research in that field and then go for the funding. Yeah. So I, what, what, I, what I would like to say is, PhD teaches you how to do research. Your research work starts after your PhD. Yes. PhD only teaches you how to research. In fact, many people think after PhD, I will do something. I will do something. In fact, PhD only is the beginning of research. Your real research starts after PhD. Okay. So when you do PhD, at the end of the thesis, you write suggestion for future work. Something which you want to do but could not do. Or where your work can be expanded. So that is that you understood your problem, you understood your result, and you feel that some more things could have been done, but I could not do it. I leave it for further research. So when you take up that such problem, your further research, and then you start work, continue working on your PhD research should not stop with PhD. You start working for one or two years and slowly try to find out who else in the country are working in similar areas, build up a network. In fact, my area, I know everybody in the country who's working in my area. Everybody I know. I'm quite active in various social medias. I keep looking, I keep searching, and then I send mail and then get a lot of, lot of results. So you should build up a network. You should keep on looking at various uh, websites to find out what is the current area which is hot. In fact, sometimes 
your uh, PhD research may not be very hot topic. So try to find out what is the current topic. Do small works and then expand it. So it, it doesn't take much money. In fact, small fundings are always available. I mean, 30, 40,000, 1 lakh is always available from various agencies. Even your institute can support. In fact, in NIT Warangal, we give about 5 lakhs to all the newly joined faculty to start their own research. It's called research seed funding. So that they, you know, they use this for work for three years and then apply for funding from bigger agencies, get good funding. So this is what IITs and NITs do, that all the new faculty are given up to 5 lakhs to start research. It's called seed money. And you start your research, publish, and use this money to get big projects. And this is what I would advise many private universities as well, that if there are really budding good faculty, give them some small seed money so that they can continue their research. Otherwise, if you don't get any money three, four years, you lose interest in research. Because you feel I'm not getting anything, or you should do something which is purely theoretical, analytical work, which may not give you much motivation. So I always you know, tell these people that and small funding is always possible from various, uh, you know, up to one lakh. There are many organizations in the country which give you funding. Many. If not understood, there are many organizations which give you small, small fundings and which you can use to do your research. Do a pilot study. You do a small pilot study and then you can extend it to a bigger project. In fact, when, I, when you go to DST, etc., we just start thinking how many of the younger researchers Think about projects which are 50 lakhs and above. If somebody asks for 5 lakhs in DST, we don't give. It's He is not able to think big. So we want people to think big, think about 50 lakhs, one crore type of projects. And such projects are critically reviewed. And if you're lucky, you get approved. So you have to, the institute should give you some basic uh, seed money. Most institute, I, in, wherever I go, I tell the institute administration that if there are really good people who come from uh, you know, good institutes, let them continue their research, give them seed money so they can start doing it. And IITs give much more for a new faculty. So you should also look at various uh, you know websites and try to find out what is the current area where they are giving funds. There's so many, you know, Indo-Spanish, Indo-Taiwan, Indo-German. Uh, I recently was in a, a Indo-Spanish uh, research review. Amazing project, in fact, which, uh, you know, many people in India, India are, are, are think. So we had to go to the various websites and search for research fundings, and research fundings are not difficult to get, provided you write a good proposal. In fact, I covered a lot of things, how to write a proposal. There's a lot of repetition of some words, because I want to emphasize writing a good proposal is very important. Writing a good type of topic is very important. Writing a good introduction is very important, what should contain. I can send you my presentation by email if you want, so they can share it with the participants. I don't mind sending this presentation. So actually, uh, we are lucky that under the uh, mentorship of Professor uh, Sanjeev Sanjayti, sir, uh, he is here at Marbury University and uh, under the leadership of our Dean Research and Development Professor R.B. Jadeja, they have so started this initiative to give the research funding, minor research project they call from the faculty members and they mentor them and give the financial support as well. So apart from the faculty members here at Marbury University, we have provision that our UG and PG students can avail funding from Marwadi University. Yeah. And from a group, from a group of people, a few faculty members, a few MTech scholars, BTEC scholars, and what will take some area, keep on working in that area. Then after five, six years, you'll be so good in that particular area. The whole country will recognize that Marwadi University is good in this particular area. That's my trademark brand that Marwadi University means this topic. So we built up a team and then grow. Definitely, sir. We, we are looking for that actually. That is the initiative we started with. Like we are connecting people like you. Participants, do you have any question? There are no question in the chat box. I think our Dean sir is also here in the meeting. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jayakumar. Thank you very much for your uh, excellent talk to our faculty members and uh, to our research scholar definitely we are always excited to invite here at physical at our campus and definitely we'll discuss in uh, terms of research and other things
I know your your provost very closely. In fact, since he is yes, I, I I know I know I know, sir. I know he has given uh, feedback and uh, remark also. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, accepting the invitation to this. Uh, Uh, we have started, sir, physically everything. So mm -hmm. definitely we are very positive and uh, in near future, uh, we are going to invite you here at the campus only. Great. I'll be very happy to interact with you. You know, this past one and a half years I've been teaching. In fact, I am a teacher who don't prepare anything for the class. I just go to class and talk. I don't carry a piece of paper also. Now with this online, I prepare PPTs, I prepare this, now, which is a waste of time, a lot of time I waste. Because I'm going to put on PPT what I already know. Yes, sir. We 100% agree with you. But uh, in certain situations, we do not have a second option. So uh, online is the only one solution that, that is that available is, with I us. Agree. In fact, we have learned a lot of things. In fact, yes, correct. Right now I use a vacuum board. I don't prepare people. Correct. I write like a blackboard and teach the whole class. Correct. That's what I do. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for your valuable time, sir. Thank you. Ritesh, you want the PP presentation, I can send you. Sure, sir. Yes, sir, please. I'll mail it to you. Yes, definitely. And even, sir, uh, under the leadership of Anvi Jadeja, sir, we have started this research methodology course for our PhD scholars as well. Mm -hmm. so we have here at NIT Warrenhill. Uh, we have classes for our PhD scholars as well. So all the faculty members, those who are from, those who are guides, and they used to deliver the classes. Even sir has initiated that some of the faculties from renowned institutes Okay. Is they are coming to our campus, they are delivering the course content to our research scholars as well, sir, for this research methodology. Great. So, hey, hopefully, I'll be going through your website of the university, I just wanted to know uh, what you're doing. As I just glanced through your website. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I was preparing this uh, PPT and your presentation. I just uh, went through your website to see how what your institute is doing. Any other remarks from your seconds? Uh, no, uh, in a very near future, uh, we'll invite sir and definitely we'll interact uh, physically. That will be more interactive uh, rather than uh, online methods. So, sir, we'll get a feel of the campus. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Yes, and we are connected by road and by air as well. So, yes, definitely we'll connect sir, physically. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Arvi Jadeja, sir, for your remarks. And Professor Jay Kumar, sir, for your positive uh, presence here. Actually, your presence, I know when I was in NIT Warangal as well, uh, most of my roommates and friends, they are from the department. They used to tell about your presence, how you make the surrounding very positive that I uh, here really experience, even in the online mode as well. So as suggested by our dean, sir, definitely we look for the physical presence, your physical presence here in Rajkot in near futures. So thank so you very much. The should come. It's a vibration. When you know we are fully positive, you go to a place, the whole area gets uh, brightened. Yes. I just mentioned one statement that don't complain for 24 hours about anything. Yes. Some, uh, from today till tomorrow, don't. And then you continue that every day. You'll find your whole life changes. So we have a habit of complaining on small, small things. Uh, I never complain. In fact, when I came to this college in 93, I did not think that I'll stay here such long. Because after being studying in IIT and IIT, I thought I'll go to IIT Bombay or other institute. But I stayed here. And I was successful. I have not lost anything by being in IIT. Definitely, sir. And we are we are also learning so many things, same things from, from our leaderships as well. Like Anvi Jadeja, sir, and our provost, sir, Sandeep Sanjiti, sir, as well. They are full of energy and positive attitude, sir. That is what we are learning from them. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for joining this uh, uh, STTP function. Uh, hopefully, we will be in touch. That's it from the participants as well. If there are any questions, there are no questions from the chat box. So I will let you know, sir, if there are any questions. Yeah. Because any questions they can send me. I will yeah, I'll, I'll share the PPT with you. Yeah, your PPT share was a no part of yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Welcome. sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you, participants, for joining the session. We'll meet uh, in the next session at 2 p.m. So we'll have, uh, we will break for the lunch and we'll join. Thank you very much, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining.